This is the twelfth video for the Ethics and Legal Considerations part of the Animal Chiropractic class. Over these last three videos, I'm going to talk about record keeping. Most of these rules are pretty much common sense, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time explaining some of them, but I think it just makes sense to review these occasionally to make sure that the way you are keeping records is appropriate. first thing to keep in mind is why do we keep records in the first place? I think many doctors believe the reason for keeping records is to protect themselves from litigation. But the reality is the record keeping systems were developed primarily for patient care. It helps the doctor remember what he's provided in the past, what's worked and what hasn't worked. It also helps the doctor communicate with his staff and other people working with him, people who are consulting or referrals. And in the event that the person providing care is unable to continue providing care, perhaps they retire or move away, then those records can help a new doctor come in and take care of the patient and the client. Now, if records are kept in a way that will help effectively with patient care, then they will also help effectively in litigation and they will also help effectively to collect insurance claims. The other benefit of good record keeping is it helps to communicate between the professionals, particularly for the chiropractors who are trying to establish themselves as good care keepers with the veterinary profession. Having good records and sharing those good records with the veterinary professionals will help show that you're a caring provider, that you're not interested just in the money, that you're thorough, and that you aren't treating the animals in a careless or negligent manner. Who owns the records? Generally, the original record belongs to the doctor who created it or to the practice clinic that created it. They don't belong to the patient or the client, rather. Uh, now, the client is entitled to see a copy of the records, and records should be released when properly requested by other providers or by the client. Uh, if a practice is closed or sold, the doctor selling the practice or closing the practice should make arrangements for somebody to take possession of the records so that they will continue to be available to clients for the time required by law. Documentation should include patient progress notes. They should reflect what treatment was provided and how the patient responded to that treatment, whether they got better or worse or stayed about the same. Be careful about using dictated but not read. MDs especially seem to use dictated but not read as a crutch or an excuse for typographical and other errors in their documents. If you're going to reduce something to writing, take the time to proofread it and make sure it's accurate and correct any typographical errors appropriately. Uh, Sign-in sheets have been used in doctor's offices, of course, for a long time. I know that some medical providers have become cautious about using sign-in sheets because of the HIPAA regulations, but sign-in sheets are still appropriate and they are still, even under the HIPAA regulations, and they provide a very good record of who came into your office and when they came in. Because of the record includes handwriting from for a number of different persons, it is almost impossible to forge a sign-in sheet. Some basic rules of record keeping, and these are particularly common sense. If records are kept in on, on paper records are kept, uh, any changes should be transparent. You should be able to see what was changed, what the record originally said, who changed it, and when it was changed. That means you shouldn't erase information. You shouldn't use whiteout fluid or labels to cover up uh, mistakes that were made. Records should be kept in ink to help reduce the temptation to make erasing or re erasures. Uh, don't skip lines or leave spaces as though you're going to come in later and fill in more information. Don't squeeze in notes between the lines or in the margins. 
uh, don't indent again to re uh, uh, reduce the temptation to insert information later. If there's a blank space at the end of a line, you can take your pen and just draw a straight line through that space so it's clear that you did not intend to use it and so that you're not attempted to use it again in the future. We'll continue talking about record keeping in the next video.